Hi, welcome to Right to Top. I'm Adam. In today's video, we're going to look at sentence variety. We're going to have a bit of an introduction into sentence types, but we're also going to look at different ways that you can make your sentences varied. You can have different types of sentences within each sentence type. Now, before I get into it, I just want you to understand this is a bit of a complicated lesson. It might seem a little bit advanced to some of you, but it's very important that you understand how you can change a sentence's composition, how to make use of uh, different elements to get variety in your sentences, make your writing a little bit more interesting. And especially for those of you taking the IELTS, TOEFL or any English exam where you have to write an essay, how to get the sentence variety points, okay? Because they're looking for different types of sentences. They don't want to see only simple sentences. So let's get right into it and look at the sentence types. Now, I will say to you right now that there will be individual lessons for each of these types so we can get a little bit more deeply involved in each. But for today, I just want to give you a bit of an introduction. Make sure you understand the four types, what they consist of and what we can do with them. So a simple sentence contains only one independent clause. Now, this independent clause can come in different forms. It could be just a subject and a verb. It could be a subject and a predicate, meaning a subject, a verb, and an object, verb and complement, verb and adverbial, etc. So there are different types of independent clauses. But again, I'll look at that more deeply in its own uh, video. A complex sentence has one independent clause and at least one dependent clause. Dependent clauses, noun clause, adjective clause, adverb clause, that complement clause. Again, another video and different videos for each one of those clauses. A compound sentence has at least two independent clauses joined by a coordinating conjunction and but or so, etc. And a compound complex. Two independent clauses with a compound with a coordinating conjunction and at least one dependent clause. So at, at least three clauses. So now the main thing to understand is that you can have sentence variety by using different ones, different types of sentences like these. Make sure that you don't have all simple sentences. That's a very boring read for the person reading it. It's very, it's very monotonous. It's like the same, 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 same. Sometimes having a few simple sentences together has a purpose. You can create pace, you can create flow, you can create emphasis. But in an overall essay, you don't want to have only one type of sentence because it's very boring for the reader to read. Plus, again, for those of you taking the tests, you're going to lose points for that. Try to have different sentence types. So let's look at examples. The economy, for simple, the economy has recovered. Subject, verb. Subject economy has recovered, verb. That's a complete sentence, complete idea, independent clause. You can also make it SVO, subject, verb, object. The economy has regained, regained what? It's upward momentum, okay? Subject, verb, object, still a simple sentence. Complex. The economy, which had been stagnant, has recovered. The economy, adjective clause, giving you a little bit of information about the economy, and then your verb. Compound. The economy has recovered, but job listings have remained stagnant. So, the economy has recovered, period, complete sentence. Job listings have remained stagnant, period, complete sentence. Join them together with a conjunction, but, and you have a compound sentence. Compound complex. The economy, which had been stagnant for some time, has finally shown signs of growth, but job listings nevertheless remain flat. The economy has finally shown signs of growth, independent clause, which had been stagnant, adjective clause about the economy, and again, but job listings, another independent clause with a coordinating conjunction. Now, these are all very basic sentences. And for example, the complex uh, sentences, I will tell you right now, the most common dependent clause that people use is the adjective clause and the adverb clause with although or when. Try to have different ones if you can, especially the noun clauses. People don't use noun clauses enough in their essays. So just keep all these in mind. Now, people often ask me, how do I make a simple sentence complex? It's actually very simple. Add an independent, uh, sorry, add a dependent clause, right? Jeff bought a car with his father's gift money. 
Jeff, subject, bought, verb, what, a car, object, how, with his father's gift money. But you have an independent clause only with some modifiers. Jeff bought a car with the gift money, which gift money, that his father gave him, adjective clause. And you have a complex sentence. But when they're talking about sentence variety on these exams, that's not what they're talking about. They don't want to just have very simple, simple sentences and very simple, complex sentences. Or I shouldn't say simple. I'm going to use the words basic and elaborate. Okay? And I'll show you what I mean in a moment. These are very easy sentences. These are the sentences that everybody tries to use on their exams. And you know what? It doesn't get you the extra points because they're very easy. So I'm going to show you different elements that you can use besides the different sentence types to get variety in your writing, to make your writing more sophisticated, more interesting, and have a lot of power in terms of controlling the pace, the emphasis, the details, all these things. So let's get started with that. Okay, so when we're talking about sentence variety, there are a few things that you can do to make your sentences varied. You can change your sentence type, simple, complex, compound, etc. You can also change the composition or the styles. So placement, where you put information, where you put your modifiers is very important in terms of the meaning or the style or the tone that you want to set in your writing. Now, modifiers are anything that changes or adds to the meaning of, like, let's say, a subject or something else, right? We're going to look at that more specifically. So, And there are different elements. You have different parts of speech that you can use. You have different tools in the grammar, in the language, basically, that you can apply to make, for example, a independent clause seem very sophisticated. So I'm going to look at what I call basic and elaborate sentences. Basic means like it's just very, you know, simple and doesn't have too much to it. It has the minimum requirement. Basically, you have the elements of the independent clause. You finish your sentence, you move on to the next sentence. Elaborate means you're adding a lot more information. You have very detail-rich modifiers. Now, what, what can be a modifier? What can be used to add information, to change something, to show a sort of relationship? You have all kinds of phrases, gerund phrases, noun phrases. You have uh, participles. Again, different video for the phrases. I'll show you all the different types that you can use and how to use them. Linking words or adverbials, like however, nevertheless, all of these things in addition, furthermore. Participles, these are ing or ed words that basically contain a, a subject and a verb inside of them. And you have to know how to use these as well, a separate lesson adverbs, prepositions. So lots of different elements that you can use and I'm going to show you some good examples of sentences that went from basic to elaborate but maintained their sentence type. Okay, so let's look at a simple example, a simple sentence meaning one independent clause. So look at a, look at a basic sentence. Trevor based his decision on several criteria. Now, you want to know what did, he, what did he have to decide on, what were the criteria, when did he do it, all these things. So I have a very basic se uh, sentence, seven words in it only, and I can have different sentences with all the other information. Or I can have a very elaborate sentence. This one has 45 words, one sentence, and it has all the information that I need. Before deciding on the most suitable school for his chosen course of study, Trevor weighed all the positives and negatives of each school according to several criteria, including their professors, national rankings, and rates of graduate employment, not to mention the tuition and living costs. Now, the first thing I want you to notice about this sentence, yeah, it's very long, but that's not what I want you to notice. There is only one clause in the entire sentence. Trevor weighed all the positives and negatives of each school. That is your independent clause. That is the only clause which means that this is a simple sentence. It looks very long, it looks very complicated or complex or however you want to see it, but it's a simple sentence. Lots of modifiers. Before deciding on, you have a participle. Uh, the school for his chosen course of study. The most suitable school, okay, that would have been enough, but I added a uh, prepositional phrase for his chosen course of study. According to, so basically I'm adding more information, the criteria including participle, all the different things in a list, and then at the end, not to mention. So this is basically a linking. I'm adding a little bit, something with a bridge phrase to it. 
but still a simple sentence. Now, let's look at another example. I'm still going to look at the simple sentence. I'm going to look at basic. The zoo's manage management team was sent to the San Diego Zoo. One, the team comprised not only the chief handler, but the CEO, CFO, and a group of senior managers. So right, right away, I have an inversion, so I'm already adding a little bit of variety. They were sent there in an effort to upgrade the zoo's operational structure and to ensure the best possible care for both its animals and their handlers. They were sent to San Diego's famed facilities to undergo specialized training in modern husbandry, taking care of animals and such. As well, they participated in seminars on the business of zoo and theme park operations and logistics. Lots of information there. Five sentences, 88 words in total. Now, is this what you want to present in your essay? You could, there's nothing wrong with it, but simple sentence, simple sentence, simple sentence, etc. Each one has an independent clause only. So look what I did with all of this information. Here I have the same information. I have one sentence, believe it or not, this is all one sentence, 72 words, which means I cut out 16 words. So I, I already did something good because if you can say something in four words, don't use six. Brevity is a good, is a tool, basically. It's a good weapon for a writer. Try to say as much as you can with as few words as you can. But that, that basically means you have to include all these different elements and get your variety. So I'm not going to actually read it out to you. It's all the same information. You can press pause on your video player, read it slowly and carefully. But the main thing I want you to notice here is that even though this is one sentence, there is still only one independent clause in this sentence, no other clauses. Okay. So what I did here, I took a comprising is the only thing that I changed. I took the verb and subject and I squished it or squeezed it. Sorry, I should say is a better word into a participle. That way I maintain phrases only. It's all modifiers, phrases, linking words, etc. I kept all the same information and I have one sentence. Now, do I recommend that you try to do this? Absolutely not. Do not do this. Imagine you're writing a 300 or so word essay. If this is 72 words, that's almost a quarter of your essay on one sentence. You don't want to do that, okay? If you're writing a 10 page essay, yeah, absolutely have once in a while, you can have something like this. Don't do it too often. Now, the main reason I don't recommend it, uh, having a sentence this long, is very, it's very easy to make mistakes along the way. It's very easy to lose connections. It's very easy to uh, misplace a modifier in such a way that the logical connection breaks and then the whole sentence falls apart because the reader gets confused and doesn't know what uh, what's going on, doesn't know how to follow the information. So it gets a little bit confusing. Also, it's a little bit demanding on the reader because the reader now has to carefully read the sentence, make sure he or she reads piece by piece to get the whole information. So if you find yourself writing a sentence that's overly long, split it at least into two separate sentences, something this long, I would even split into three, but here it is split into two different sentences. Notice I only added two words. So after training, I have a period and then I have the team. That's the only thing I added. I have two sentences, each one with one independent clause, two simple sentences, all the information remains. So the reason you don't want to have a long sentence as well, run on sentences are very common. I've, I've seen lots of test takers have run on sentences. Now a run on sentence is a sentence that has at least two independent clauses, but no conjunction. So it's where it should have been split, it wasn't. So you have the thing just keeps running on one onto the other and it doesn't make sense. Surprisingly, it's also very easy to have a sentence fragment, meaning that you, you're missing a subject or you're missing a verb and therefore you don't have a complete clause. Okay, so very careful when you're writing long sentences, but try to have one or two of these longer sentences in your essays for a little bit higher scores. Now, if you're aiming for a six or a 6.5, let's say in IELTS, you don't really need to get too deep into sentences like this. If you want to get the eight, you need to have at least, you have to at least demonstrate that you can write some more elaborate sentences. Okay. Now what you can do is just, the easiest thing to do is just add 
a dependent clause in here somewhere or another independent and change the sentence type but still use a lot of modifiers to make it a little bit more elaborate. So let's look at uh, the next one. So let's look, at a, let's look at a complex sentence and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go from basic to elaborate. And just, all I'm doing is just adding information without adding extra clauses or changing the essential uh, independent clause. The author whose best-selling book, The Garden, has been on the New York Times bestsellers list for over 18 months, has announced a release date for her upcoming memoir, okay? So I have a independent, the author has announced the release, and I have a adjective clause, who's best selling book. Now, all I'm gonna do is just add some more information and I'm gonna add another uh, dependent clause or more. The author whose best selling book, The Garden, has been on the New York Times bestsellers list for over 18 months, has announced that the release date for her upcoming memoir, which many critics have already hailed as the must read book of the summer, will be delayed until the fall. So the author has announced, announced what? That. Now I'm giving you a noun clause, okay, as an object to announced what? So object to announced. Inside the noun clause, I have an adjective clause, which many critics, okay? So the key of what you should be practicing is putting clauses inside clauses, dependent clauses inside in de uh, dependent clauses which work with an independent clause. Dependent inside dependent, working with independent. Again, I know it's not easy. All of this stuff will be laid out in more detail in separate videos, but for now, I just want you to be able to look at this. At least I want you to recognize what is happening. Now, a lot of you will be doing a lot of very heavy reading, very academic reading. This is the kind of stuff you're gonna see. This is the kind of stuff you're gonna to have to work with and analyze and basically separate into its different pieces so that you understand the message. Remember, the independent clause always carries the core message. Everything else is modifying. Everything else is adding information, changing relationships, etc. You have to understand how to look at this. Compound. Now, generally, I don't recommend making a basic compound sentence into an elaborate one. It's very easy to get to make mistakes here. If you want to add an extra independent clause, go ahead. Generally, I try, I tr personally when I write, I try not to have three independent clauses in one sentence. I'll have two and then I'll put the third one into its own sentence with other information. It's very easy to get confused, it's very easy to make the reader confused. But, regular exercise helps to build muscles and a proper diet provides these muscles with the nutrients for this growth. So very basic, two very basic independent clauses. Now, if you want to add some sort of variety and if you want to make it a little bit more elaborate, don't worry about too many clauses. Change the style of the writing. Change the elements you're using. So instead of regular exercise, exercise being a simple noun, I change it to a gerund. Exercising regularly. Regular becomes regularly. Exercise becomes exercising. Helps the body build muscles. Now, because I changed the first one to a gerund and I have and, I want to have a parallel structure. It creates a bit more of a balance. It creates a bit of more, a better flow for the reader. So, and eating properly allows these muscles to get the nutrients necessary for sustained growth. I'm adding a little bit more sustained growth instead of just growth, okay? I'm giving a little bit, making it a little bit more detail rich. So a person needs to do both in order to maintain a fit physique. And I'm giving you a concluding, uh, conclusion, another independent clause three independent clauses. Again, that, that's more of a writer's choice. I personally don't like to do it. Not wrong. If you want to, go ahead. Compound complex. Many legal experts believe her story and they think that the attorney general has a duty to investigate. Okay. Many le legal experts believe her story, independent clause, and they think, so now I'm already, they think is already in the, your second independent clause joined by and, so there's your compound. What do they think? That the attorney general has a duty to investigate. So noun clause as object to think. Two independents, one dependent, basic uh, compound complex sentence. Elaborate, just start loading information in it, more clauses, more uh, phrases, more modifiers, etc. Although many legal experts believe that her story is credible and that the attorney general has a duty to investigate, 
So I, that her story is credible and that the attorney general. So two noun clauses as objects to believe all inside an adverb clause beginning with although. Most of them also understand. There's your independent clause. What? Another noun clause. That. Inside the noun clause, I have, again, an adverb clause. If. That. If the details of the story were made public, it would ruin the careers of many of the nation's top politicians. Now I have another adjective clause about politicians, many of whose names have been linked to the scandal. So, and now I have another compound uh, another independent with a compound, uh, with a coordinating conjunction. So they want this investigation to be conducted in private and handled internally. Now, again, if you want to try to write these kinds of sentences, absolutely try it, practice. But remember, it takes practice. And just be very careful. If, you want, if you're not sure that everything is full and correct and proper, first thing you want to do is count all your verbs. For every tense verb, not infinitive, like two verbs or base verbs, no. All uh, tense verbs, the ones that take a time, past, present, future, make sure that you have a subject to go with them. If you don't, something's missing. Okay? Now, then, make sure that every subject and, and, ver uh, subject and verb combination is part of one um, clause. So if you have so many clauses, make sure that you have the clause conjunctions like although or that or if or which, right? So everything has to have a proper place, a proper structure, and everything has to work together and everything has to be logically connected, right? If the reader is reading and gets lost halfway through your sentence, you've written a bad sentence. If you've written a bad sentence, you've written a bad paragraph. If you've written a bad paragraph, you've written a bad essay, okay? Everything is connected to everything else. You have to be very careful about this. Now, again, the main, th the main thing I want you to take away from this particular lesson is not to try to write long sentences like this. I want you to be able to read long sentences like this and understand exactly what is happening, what the subjects are, what the verbs are, what the independent clauses are, what the core message is, what the external message or messages are. Okay, so a little bit tricky, a little bit complicated. It just takes practice. Now, the most important thing you have to remember about all of this, in order to make these elaborate sentences, you have to very clearly understand what a phrase is, what types of phrases there are, how to use them, where to place them, what their function is. Some of them are very specific functions. You have to know the linking words, the transition words. You have to know how adverbs work. You have to know how participles work. Not enough people use participles in their writing. Study the participles. They're very, very important. They give you so much leverage. Leverage basically means they let you do so many different things. They give you so many options that your writing can only improve and get better and better and your scores go up and up. Now, when you go to university <clears throat> and you will be writing 10 page papers for your professors, they're going to want to see this, these types of sentences, especially in academia. They like long sentences there. Not necessarily good sentences, they just like long sentences, but correct sentences. So learn all the different parts. You can go to my website, writetotop.com. You have basically an introduction to all of these different elements there that you can get started with. And again, I will be making videos for each different element. I am currently working on a writing course and the first unit, it's a video course with workbooks and everything. The first unit is the sentence, where I go into very detail about all these, all, all these different uh, elements and structures, etc. I hope it will be ready by fall this year, 2017, September, hopefully. And, but I'll update you as we go along. Now, if you have any questions about this, by all means, please ask below in YouTube, in the comment section, or at my Facebook page. Uh, if you like this video, give me a like. If you liked it a lot, subscribe to my channel. Lots more coming, grammar, vocab, test tips, etc. All this stuff. So I hope to see you again very soon.